J.D. Vance, thank you. I know you're, you've been up, you were on the floor at 4 a.m. Have you slept yet? Uh, I have not, no, no, but I'm still uh, pretty oh, fired up, you. so I'll, I'll, I'll sleep later. Glenn. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you bet. Uh, okay, so tell us about this clause, this hidden clause. Well, so so basically, you have to go back to 2019 to understand this. So, um, using a weird, archaic rule uh, from the Impound Control Act, the Democrats argued in 2019 that because money had been appropriated to Ukraine, so note the similarity, uh, even though it's five years apart, because the money had been appropriated to Ukraine, and because Trump had refused to spend the money as appropriated, he had actually violated the law. And so, what they have done with this law. Uh, here is appropriate money, not just through the end of 2024, but into 25 and into 26. And so if Trump, again, refused to give the money that was appropriated to Ukraine in exactly the manner prescribed, they would have not just a similar, but the exact same argument for impeaching him in 2025 as they did in 2019. Now, it would be absurd and spurious, and we would hopefully defeat it, uh, but we shouldn't give the Democrats weapons uh, because they might stupidly use them. We should just not give the Democrats weapons. So tell me where this, speaking of weapons, tell me where this money actually goes, because they say we're arming the Ukrainians. No, we've already done that. We've armed them. And I'm sure some of this is for the military. But what else are we funding in that $90 billion? Well, so there's a lot of humanitarian assistance, uh, by the way, not just to uh, the Ukrainians, but also that will flow to the Gazans. Uh, we know what happens with humanitarian assistance that flows to Gaza. It very often ends up in the hands of Hamas. So I, I guarantee that at least a few dollars of American taxpayer money will flow to Gaza. You know, on the Ukrainian side, we have to remember that the humanitarian assistance is actually the biggest source of corruption. Uh, we've heard, for example, uh, from American energy companies that have tried to do business in Ukraine, uh, that the Ukrainian humanitarian assistance is handed out in the form of sweetheart contracts to Ukrainian oligarchs and the companies that they have heavily inflated. Of course it is. We, I mean, we've documented this forever, forever. I mean, if you don't know it by now, you're, you're, I mean, you're just blind to the truth and you're just a reckless senator. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, look, we know exactly what's going on. We know it's a corrupt country. Uh, we know that, you know, yes, there is some money in this package to rebuild the American weapons supplies. But, but remember, we, have, we give so much discretion in the Congress to Joe Biden using what's called Presidential Drawdown Authority, or PDA, uh, that the president will immediately take the weapons that are produced for our own stocks and then just hand them over to Ukraine. So uh, this is a massive boondoggle. We know that it will benefit a lot of corrupt parties. Uh, and importantly, we know that it will continue this war, uh, which I, I think is just not in America's core interest. I think there's no strategy. There's no plan to bring this thing to a close. And I'm I'm really just scandalized, Glenn, at how many Republicans voted for this, given the impeachment time bomb that we just discussed, given how endless the Ukraine war is, given that Joe Biden is commander in chief. You know, one of the arguments I hear from my friends on the pro-Ukraine funding side is they say, well, we should be doing this, this, this and this. And I always say, well, why do you have any confidence that Joe Biden would do any of these things, given how incompetent his administration is? We, we don't have President Donald Trump or even, you know, President Tom Cotton in the Oval Office. We, we have a President Joe Biden, and we have to make public policy as if we live in reality. So what's going to happen now? The bill passed. Well, the, you know, the one thing I will say, Glenn, is, you know, it's always bad when your enemies gain territory, but sometimes it can be a per victory because they gain territory at a lot of loss. I mean, we really, I think, inflicted some damage in the messaging battle yesterday, which was ultimately the goal of, you know, spending so much time on the House floor and filibustering as long as we did. Uh, the House is really, I think, radicalized against this legislation. The only way, really the only way for it to pass in the House is for Republicans to cooperate with Democrats to give the floor over to Hakeem Jeffries. This is called a discharge petition. And look, we just have to make sure this doesn't happen. Uh, in fact, any Republican who cooperates in handing the floor to Hakeem Jeffries should get an immediate primary and should be persona non grata in the Republican Party. So that is the next stage of the fight. We have much, much better terrain uh, for that fight in the House because we have the majority. 
Uh, we'll see what happens, Glenn, but I'm optimistic we can at least kill this version of the bill. Well, I hope it continues. I, I just, uh, you know, there, there's so much misinformation on by the government uh, that this was a border bill. This last one was a border bill. No, it wasn't. It was an immigration bill. And nobody except Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden have been asking for an immigration bill. Well, America has rejected that over and over and over again. Comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, w- w- that's not what we were asking for. We were asking for the border to be secured. Now, it, does it look like anything's going to happen on that front? Well, unless the House really stands their ground, Glenn. I mean, again, what, what we should say to the president is you don't get another dime for Ukraine unless you actually secure the border. That's sort of a basic operating presumption. We won't even consider bills that give money to Ukraine unless you secure the border. We really need the House to sort of stand firm on this point. I think they have a chance, actually, because, again, they have the majority and they have the willpower here. It's just, it's, again, it's going to be a question of how many Republicans they can find to stab their voters in the back. Um, unfortunately, uh, there, there, there are a few out there. We know that. Hopefully there are not enough in, in the House to do it and to give Team Jeffries control of the floor. I remember, um, I remember September 11th. I have absolutely no idea what we were talking about the day before. But all of it was irrelevant. I don't know if you've heard uh, the sheriff of Butler County, Richard Jones, but uh, he said he was briefed along with the other sheriffs from the National Sheriff's Association by uh, Christopher Ray last week. And uh, Christopher Ray uh, scared the sheriff's uh, association to their core, it sounds, uh, saying that there, we, are, we have a terrorist attack that is imminent. Everything changes, and I don't know how... Every Republican, or even just how every sellout that just only cares about re-election is missing that because of these open borders and because of what we're doing uh, in Ukraine and with Taiwan and, uh, and Israel or Iran, we are ripe for the taking for, for terrorist attacks. And when that happens, these guys are not going to fare well at the polls. They're just not. No, they're not, Glenn. And Sheriff Jones is a good guy. I know him. He's at Butler County is actually where I was born and raised, uh, Butler County, Ohio. Wow. So uh, he, he's, he's dead right, unfortunately. We, we're at the greatest risk of a terrorist attack in this country in at least 20 years. Uh, we know that there are many thousands of people who are at least suspected on the terrorist watch list. At least a few hundred of them are definitely uh, terrorists. They're in our country. We have no reason why. We have no reason what they're planning. And this is unfortunately the consequence of Joe Biden's open border. Um, mm. I, you know, look, I, of course, hope nothing happens. Uh, and Me I too. think that we have to do everything that we can to prevent as many bad people as we can from coming into the country. But we also have to prepare. Uh, and, I, and I think, unfortunately, we have a lot of bad dudes in this country right now. You know what I always notice, Glenn, is, is these people always argue, uh, meaning the, the open borders folks, they always say, this is about asylum. These people are fe- fleeing political persecution. And then you look at the people who are allegedly claiming asylum, and they're all like men between the ages of 20 and 35. I, I-, I tend to remember mm. from my history that when political persecution is happening, it's the women and children who are the most affected by it, not the 20 to 35-year-old yep. military age men. So it's pretty frightening stuff. Isn't that weird? Thank you, J.D. I appreciate it. Go get some sleep. Uh, J.D. Vance, uh, the senator from Ohio, has been... Uh, up all night trying to stop this bill in the Senate, along with a handful of others, and I thank every single one of them for doing their job. Uh, this is a wrong-headed bill. It is. Uh, it, I, I don't know how, uh, but it will be discovered at some point. Who enriched themselves? What NGOs enriched themselves? What politicians enriched enrich themselves? Where did all this money go, actually? It will be revealed. It's just a matter of time.